Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and follow in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. It shall celebrate, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. the child of your handmaid, you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord 
in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Humanity has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in God's self, and will glorify him at once. 
Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to my opponents among the Jewish leaders, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our loving Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The disciples do not know why, but the air in the house is thick. The days have swung from the miraculous to the confrontational, and every night it takes a few deep breaths just to process the day. Still, tonight feels a bit different. Jesus seems even more deliberate in his words to them. He seems intent. He is seeing them, but also seeing what lies beyond the bend. It feels like present and future are colliding in this space, but it's difficult to figure out which is which. Jesus speaks of bread and wine, and the disciples eat and drink. He speaks of covenant and brokenness and blood. The disciples eat and drink, listening as best they can to what he is saying and what he is not saying. Then he kneels down before them, before each one, and washes their feet between their toes and up to their ankles, drying each foot before sliding over to the next. With these words, Dr. Brian Bantam of Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary invites his reader into the moment of Maundy Thursday, into the night of Jesus' last meal with his disciples, the meal at which he takes on the role of host and servant, offering his body and blood and washing and wiping his disciples' feet. John says that Jesus' hour has now come. His work in this world is coming to its conclusion. He will now be returning to the Father. His ministry has revealed the depth and extent of God's love for the world, and now it finds yet another vivid expression in the washing of feet. John's description here suggests the tension that Dr. Bantam evokes as Jesus' actions unfold deliberately, almost in real time. Foreshadowing what is to come during his hour, Jesus takes off his robe, the same word John uses for laying down his life on the cross. He takes up the towel. He pours water into the basin. And then he begins to wash his disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel, one by one, even of the one who will betray him. Peter serves, as usual, as representative disciple when he objects to what Jesus is doing. Jesus is their teacher, Lord, and friend, Honor, custom, and propriety could never abide Jesus washing the feet of his followers. His dialogue with Jesus Jesus shows the disciples' misunderstanding. For Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. This is, Dr. Gail O'Day writes, about being in close community with Jesus, about participating fully in his life that he shares. The foot washing is an act of divine hospitality. And its power and beauty come not from the cleansing properties of water, not even solely from the example of servanthood it gives, but in the ultimate offer of relationship with Jesus and thus with God from whom he was sent. It is an invitation to participate in the love shared by God and Jesus and in God's love for the entire world. The disciples are clean not because of the water, but because of this relationship that Jesus has offered. It is a love that will soon be made known in its fullest expression at the cross. Dr. Bantam continues, The room feels like it is filled with water, and they are not so much sitting as they are floating, not so much talking as they are absorbing the reverberations of sound echo, only making out every other word. They are on the verge of something, 
Houses on the eve of death sometimes feel like this. Time itself begins to bend. Minutes both freeze and fly by. Mothers and brothers frenetically wash dishes or sweep floors. Others cling to the deathbound, trying to keep them from slipping into another world, or at least to keep them company on the way. Of course, the disciples don't know that Jesus is going to die, or at least they don't really believe what he's indicated to them so many times by now. But the house feels different that night. You cannot go where I am going, Jesus says. The present comes rushing in and the water recedes and they hear Jesus' voice clearly now, so clearly that it is pressing in on them. Though as usual, these words don't seem to quite touch the ground. Does he mean you can't go with me into the seat of imperial power and oppose the governor with me? Or does he mean you can't go to where the dead have gone and stitch life back into death? Perhaps he means you cannot be the charismatic force of nature pulling tens of thousands from place to place through your own force of nature or clever words, or maybe all of the above. But they can love one another, he says. It's not fantastic. It's not glamorous or revolutionary. Jesus asked them to love one another and not just in words of affirmation or random acts of kindness. His disciples are lying and sit sitting around him after dinner with full bellies and clean feet. Love one another. Perhaps, Dr. Bantam says, Jesus is saying to them, feel that stretch in your bellies, that lack of hunger, that taste of bread that still touches your tongue. Love like that. Love in such a way that people feel the hunger ebb from them, even for just a moment. Do you feel the cool of the air, your feet clean of that film of dust that had come to feel like a second skin after a day's walking? Love should feel like this. The commandment to love one's neighbor, to love one another, was already essential to the Judaism of Jesus and his disciples. What is new to this commandment in tonight's reading is the incarnate example given by Jesus, God made flesh. The disciples have seen how Jesus has made known God's love for the world in his specific teaching and actions. They have been invited with him into the events of this hour, sharing a meal and having their feet washed. And they are invited to witness such love in action once again in his impending death and resurrection. Again, Dr. Gail O'Day writes, To interpret Jesus' death as the ultimate act of love enables the believer to see that the love to which Jesus summons the community is not the giving up of one's life, but the giving away of one's life. The distinction between these is important because the love that Jesus embodies is grace, not sacrifice. Jesus gave his life to his disciples as an expression of the fullness of his relationship with God and of God's love for the world. Jesus' death in love, therefore, was not an act of self-denial, but an act of fullness, of living out his life and identity fully. This is what Jesus' followers then and today are invited to do, to live out our lives in community fully, in love for one another, in relationship with all those whom God has given us to know. Dr. Bantam concludes, Maundy Thursday, filled with anticipation and uncertainty, gives us a new commandment. Inside the thrill of triumphal entries and crowds pressing in, this man the disciples love has said everything they wish they could have said to the money changers and the powers that be. But now they feel a turn, murmurings and furtive glances. Jesus himself seems to take more time than usual. The week slows to a crawl. Tucked inside this muddle is the command to be with one another, to make sure everyone has enough, to make sure their feet have been freed from the burdens of the day so they can sleep well and walk new into the next day. People will see this, Jesus says to them. When they do, they invite the stranger into this love. Feed them, wash their feet, Perhaps even more, Jesus is telling them, you don't have to be like me in the ways you think you do. 
simply break bread, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me, wash one another's feet. I love the Lord because the Lord has heard my voice and my supplications, writes the psalmist. Because the Lord inclined the Lord's ear to me, therefore I will call on the Lord as long as I live. Dr. Bantam says Jesus has inclined more than his ear to us. He has bent down. He has inclined the fullness of himself into our lives. On the eve of his death, perhaps we can feel the weight of this, the heaviness of our homes, the heaviness of our hearts, the heaviness of our world. But perhaps we might also sit back in our confusion about where it is we can and cannot go and lift our eyes to where Jesus has asked us to be right now, here, and with whom.
Beloved in Christ, on this night we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Our commitment to this loving service is signified in the washing of feet, following the example our Lord gave us on the night before his death. This evening we have two stations for foot washing. We invite you to come forward as you feel moved and sit in either of the chairs to receive the foot washing.
Let us pray for new life in the church, 
new hope for the world, and God's love for all who are in need. God who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and in love to our neighbors. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God who blesses the grain of soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. God who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. God who sits at the table with us, Grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communion today and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith and grace and courage. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. God, who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. We pray to you, O God, in the name of the one who endured the cross, forgives our sin, and feeds us at his table. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Jesus, our Savior, you, you are, are the, the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless us in these gifts that we have gathered, that, that all people may know your goodness and love. We, we pray this in your Lord. holy name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O living God, sovereign of time and space. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Your word leads us across the waters to freedom, passing over with us from death to life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O living God, for your glory revealed in Jesus Christ. He is the Lamb whose blood saves us from sin. He is your servant who washes our feet with mercy. He is himself our food, the bread and cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Blessed be God forever. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. Blessed are you, O living God, for your spirit of love. Feed us at this table with the body and blood of your Son. Make us servants of one another and of everyone in need. Bring us with all your people to the joy of the resurrection. Blessed be God forever. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the 
power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table of mercy. Receive God's gifts of grace.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrifice, may the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. Oh
darkness is my only God.